Hi, this is Dr. Phil Rosencrantz. We're going to be talking here about incremental analysis when we have more than two alternatives. That's from Chapter 8 in our textbook. We're also going to be talking about a few other of the financial statistics that we use from Chapters 8 and 9. I'll also bring back some from Chapter 7. And so anyway, first thing we need to do is take a look at our various alternatives and uh, calculate some basic statistics to see if we can uh, eliminate some of them up front. So we're, let's go ahead and use column B, which is alternative A, um, as our starting point. And the first thing we want to do is calculate the present worth of benefits. Now we have a present worth of cost of 400, and then we have five years of benefits at 126. We're going to go ahead and use our function icon uh, to pull up the present value um, function. And for the rate, our minimum attractive rate of return we're using is in the yellow square, 15%. So I'm going to put in 0.15. I'll just type it in. And number of periods is 5. And for the payment, I'm going to go ahead and address cell uh, B3. Uh, because uh, we want to be able to use indirect uh, addressing here and say OK. And that present worth of benefit, it shows a minus uh, 422. I'm going to go ahead and put a minus sign in the formula bar so I can reverse it in cell B8. If I drag that across, I get uh, the present worth of benefits for all five alternatives. Now I can calculate the benefit cost ratio. I have um, the present worth of benefits and the present worth of costs for all the alternatives. The present worth of cost is in cell A2, year 0. So I'm going to say equals. I'm going to use a minus sign because I want to reverse the sign and get a positive number. Um, B8 divided by B2. And I get 1.06. And then rate of return, I'm going to use, go back to my function icon, choose the IRR, internal rate of return function, OK. And the values I want to block are years 0 through uh, 5. Hit OK. And I get 17.3%. Uh, I recommend you always go at least one decimal, and if you're using percentages, uh, to get uh, to make sure that you're going to be able to discern things properly. So that's 17.3%. Now I can get net present worth by taking the present worth of benefits and subtracting the present worth of costs. So that equals cell B8. And because uh, present worth of cost is already a negative, I'll say plus B2. OK. Oh, all right. Plus. So it's 22. And payback period is from Chapter 9. Payback period is how long does it take you to recuperate your first year investment, your initial investment. How many years will it take us, for example, for alternative A, how many years will it take us to get our $400 back? So we just divide our initial investment by the amount per year. So that equals cell B2 divided by cell B3. And I'm going to go ahead and change the sign so I get a positive number. Now I have 3.2 years. So that's how long it takes us to get our $400 back. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag these across using the lower right corner of the cell to make a plus and drag it across.
Okay, so we've calculated a lot of statistics for uh, these five alternatives. And let's take a look at what we have here. First of all, <clears throat> we want to compare uh, the, each of them to the minimum attractive rate of return. The MAR is 15%, and four of them are above that. And alternative B, 11.9% is below that. So we can reject alternative B from our um, incremental analysis right away because it's never going to meet the MARR and it can't beat any of the other alternatives as being preferable. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and fill that column in with a color just to kind of separate it from the others. So we have four alternatives left. And we want to do incremental analysis. So it's similar to Chapter 7. Uh, we do them a pair uh, by pair. But we start with the two lowest cost, first cost alternatives, and compare those. And then we work our way up with the winner of each increment going against the next higher cost. So uh, make sure that you don't just start taking columns and comparing them, A to C, winner to D, winner to E, uh, you might accidentally get the right answer. But we are, our method to get the right answer, we have to start with the two lowest costs, which are E and C. So we're going to take E minus C as our first increment. So that equals, to get the difference between the two, so that equals F 2 minus D2. And so our first incremental uh, amount uh, for first year cost is minus 100. And then we'll go ahead and drag it down and, and get the increments for each year. Now, what are we looking at here? What we're looking at is this. The cost to go to alternative E over C is $100, but we get $32 of benefit, net benefit for each of those years. The question is whether or not this extra 100 is worth spending. So let's look at a few of our statistics here. We have, uh, there's the present worth of benefit. Um, we have a benefit cost ratio of over one. And the incremental rate of return is 18%. Now, 18% is greater than 15%. So that means we're getting a really good return on our $100 extra. So we're going to retain a higher cost alternative, which is E. And I'm going to go ahead and get the net present worth of benefit to show that it's positive. OK. So for my next increment, I want to compare E, the winner, I'll put that here to the next higher cost, which is A, 400. So I have A minus E. A is B2. So that equals B2 minus F2. That's a $200 jump. Drag this down. $57 for each one. I'm going to go ahead and drag these over. Now you'll notice that the rate of return on the increment is less than 15%. Also notice that the benefit cost ratio is less than one. So that's pretty much what you'll find. The way this works is if the if you're below the MARR, then the benefit cost ratio is below one. Let's look at net present worth, as long as we're here, of the increment. And you'll notice that that's a negative number because we're less than the, uh, the MARR is less than 15%. So because we did not reach the MARR, we reject the higher cost alternative and E is our winning alternative. Now we're going to compare our final competitor, 
D to E. Make that a D here. And so I have E2 minus F2. Let me put a minus sign in front of that, or an equal sign. That's a $300 difference. Let's see what kind of increments we have. Present with a benefit. I'm really interested in the the next two. So our incremental rate of return was 10.6%. That's less than the MARR. We reject the increment again. And the winning alternative is E. And for the sake of completeness, that again, the net present worth of the increment is negative. So alternative E is the winner. Now, incremental analysis said alternative E was the winner. What would net present worth analysis tell us? Which of our net present worths was the highest value? It was also E. And that's what you'll find is whether you're using equivalent uniform annual worth or net present worth or incremental analysis, you will get the same alternative as being the winner. Now, don't make the mistake of just looking at the rates of return to pick the winner. Rate of return analysis tells us we have to use the incremental approach. If you just use the highest rate of return, that's alternative C, 24.8%. But it's not the best use of our money. So that's what we're doing here is finding what's the best overall use for our money. What will get us the highest return our, on our investment? And in this case, it's alternative E, spend 300 and then instead of spending four or 500, uh, we're going to save that extra money and spend it somewhere else where we can get the MARR, but we want alternative E. Now let's look at payback period. Payback period uh, kind of alludes to the idea that the faster you get your money back, the better are the alternative, and that is alternative C. But we've already shown that with the other techniques, we don't get alternative C we get alternative E, which is a 2.9 year payback. So just getting your money back the fastest doesn't mean you're getting the highest rate of return. Now, a quick comment about payback period. Used all by itself is a terrible way to run your business. But you can use it in conjunction with one of the other techniques if you're trying to call out projects that have real long payback periods because you're cash poor. So I think I've mentioned that somewhere else. So this is incremental analysis and uh, hopefully this will kind of pull things together for chapters seven through nine and uh, make sure that you understand this.